and all mankind around. And the judgment will take place, then you will realize who is weak and who is strong. That's what this old lady said to this young man. You use your strength to do wrong to me. There is someone who is stronger than you. What I wanted to say is that, as I told you last time, having my education in Syria we learn a lot from the Tarbia more than what we learn from the books. And I want to share with you, and you will learn from distance the importance of learning from somebody. As we know that the best teacher for a human being is a human being. We know that there are so many ways to learn and collect information, especially nowadays. But the real teacher for a human being is a human being. Not only the information they are passing on to us, but something beyond that. The core of the knowledge. And from the school that put us together as children from all over the world, and that school became a mother for all of us. And the teachers with our parents. But as you know, sometimes as children, we misbehave towards our parents. And we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not to take us into account for that. And one of the incidents that happened one day in the Ma'ahat, when one of the shuyukh, Sa'ad al ghalayini he was so easy with us in the class. To the extent that when there is exam time, some of the students, they open their books and copying and writing. And the sheikh didn't care. And some of the students got angry. Because of that, how come we work hard and do our best in the exam and other people just copy and get the same mark. But the sheikh wanted us to understand more than that. This is not a test. The real test is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If this is a harvest <laughs> of your education in Islam, you cannot work unsupervised. It means you didn't know anything about Islam yet. You are learning for people. You are learning for marks and looking for jobs. You are already employed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, starting from this class, how to be honest. Our teachers will not follow us everywhere we go, but they will remind us, someone will be wherever you go. Think of him, don't think of us. One day we will disappear. So one day the student decided, when Sheikh Saad comes into the class, we go out. And that was the last year for our class. We just want him to be a bit hard on those kids who are copying and getting higher marks in the exam. And when we went out, when the chef came in and he found no one in the class, he didn't get angry. He went back to the office and he told Sheikh Musa, the principal of the school, that nobody in my class and the sheikh came to where we are, where we went. And he gave us one of two choices. And he said, a soft, a thalis, a thanawi, imma ila al wa imma ila kharij suriya. Once, you students go back to the class, or we will send you back home. So your parents know that. You didn't come here to study. And straight away went back to the class. And then the principal came and he said, you know what you're doing? This is a sheikh who is educating you and not getting paid. The scholars are coming to this sheikh's house to have private lessons. And he walked to you to teach you without getting paid. <laughs> and this is how you treat him. And when the sheikh came back to the class, all he said, 
لا تقريب عليكم اليوم يا أبنائي يغفر الله لي ولكم Oh my children, I don't blame you. It's over. May Allah forgive me and forgive you for what happened. <coughs> Where can we get this type of akhlaq? The ulama rabbaniye, people who will not tell you to take the knowledge from the books, but from their akhlaq. The way the world learned from Muhammad alayhi salatu wa salam. Many people, they read the Quran and they heard about the hadith. Yet, they will not convinced until they meet the man, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then they say, this is not a lie. Just looking at his face, you can see the nur of the truth and the nur of Islam. And the akhlaq that the Holy Quran produced, and his akhlaq was the Quran. وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَىٰ خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ and this is example of in front of who we sit down to learn. All the books that we used to study from, that books by now they are all gone. But the life and the akhlaq of that shape will never disappear from our life. Wherever we go, this is what we call real murabi. Every, everybody can be a teacher. But numbers of murabin or real educators are limited. If education means to pass that information to someone, anybody can do that. But education is really it is silent and spiritual and hidden. And only the honest students can keep it with them forever. And they will never forget their real educators. These are the people who dealt with them in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It was not a job between a teacher and a student. It was a religious duty. That is Sheikh Saad al Ghalayini. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept his effort. And the other incident is when one of the students from Yugoslavia, Ali Rido Yaqubi, when he misbehaved a bit, and he made Sheikh Abdul Samad, the teacher of Aqidah and Fiqh and Farai for our class. The Sheikh got angry. And whenever he got angry, all he will say, I will not teach you anymore. That is the only thing he will say, until you behave. And then he will start smiling again. Did you behave? I will start now. But Ali Rida, he was not quiet. And he said, Ali, it's You go out. And Ali said, no, I'm not going out. I can't leave you here and go out. He started joking. But he said to him, go out. And he did it. So the sheikh said, Khairuddin, go and kill and call Abu al-Fadl. Abu al-Fadl is Sheikh Nazir al-Maktabi. The student is scared of him like anything. And when you issue raise to him, you are in big trouble. And usually, teachers don't call him easy. But Sheikh Abdul Samad he said, Luran call as a warning. And Khairuddin went, but he didn't call Abu Fadl. He called Abu Mahmoud. And Abu Mahmoud is the cleaner of the school. The one who will sit always on the gate and picking up the rubbish from the school. Abu Mahmoud came into the class and he said, Where you? Where is Ali? And then the teacher of the summer, he started laughing. They all understand how to raise up children. And then Abu Mahmoud, the man who we didn't respect in our ignorance days, and we think he's only a cleaner. He doesn't know anything. And that's what happened in many places. They look at people through their jobs. If you are in the office, you are great. If you are collecting rubbish or cleaning toilets, you are nothing. That is happening in countries that call themselves Muslims. And they will make it very clear the class system around the Muslims, which you don't see in places like that, like these places. Your job will never identify you. You are the prime minister or the toilet pit cleaner. That doesn't put you up or down. You are a human being. And you are working hard to survive. You are great. 
but for many Muslim countries who don't really have the spirit of Islam, their greatness comes from the clothes that they are using, or the shoes, or the hat, or the car, or the salary, and so on. It was Abu Mahmoud that day, we looked at him differently, the way he spoke to us. Seriously, and we never believe Abu Mahmoud can be that serious. But when he talked to us on that day, we could not believe that man knows so much. <laughs> and then one student said, Abu Mahmoud, we didn't know that you know that much about Islam. And he said to us, I could know more if I have the chance that you have right now. My parents died when I was a kid. I was waiting like the way you see me now, like that all my life, to look after my two, my two sisters. I had no time to go to madrasa or have a shape like this man who is here for me. <coughs> That's what he told us. Abu Mahmoud, you don't know who you're dealing with. <coughs> and then Sheikh Abu Samad said, Assalamualaikum ya Abnai, all my children, did you hear? It is something we never, never forget. And this happened way in Syria. The place when one of the students, he died, he fell down from the third floor, and he died. And the mother informed the parents, and the mother, which is very difficult to call from Africa to Syria, but she called, and she said, my son didn't die, he is a shaheed. And Islam told him at that, anybody go away from home and learn, and they die when they are overseas for knowledge, they have the key to paradise. That's what the woman said and sent to the school. And we can't forget this type of things. Truly, it is days that some, sometimes for what we hear and what we see, we can learn from that. The way Al Khalifa Al Mansur, on the day he became the Khalifa, and people are coming in to congratulate him. When Muqatil ibn Suleiman came into him as a scholar, the Khalifa said, Aidni ya Muqatil, O Muqatil, give me wa'ad. And wa'ad is something that can bring tears into our eyes and soften our heart. The Khalifa wanted something like that from that scholar. And Muqatil said to him, A'iduka bima ra'aitu am bima samiat. You want me to give you what? From my experience, something I have heard about to share with you or something I have seen with my own eyes. The Khalifa said, A'idni bima ra'ait. <coughs> Tell me about something that you have seen with your own eyes. Muqatil said to him, you know the Khalifa Umar bin Abdul Aziz and the Khalifa Hisham ibn Abdul Malik. Yes. Umar bin Abdul Aziz, when he died, he left 11 kids and he left 18 dinar. Five dinar was used for his coffin, and four dinar for the grave. So only nine dinar left to be divided among his eleven kids. Put that in your mind. The other Khalifa, Hisham ibn Abdul Malik, when he died, the share of one of his four wives, the cash only, was 80,000 dinar. And that is only one eighth. You know, when we die and we have children, our wife will have one eighth. If we don't have children, she will have one quarter. So one eighth for one of the four wives was 80,000 dinar. This is only the cash. Forget about the property and other things. And then Mukatu said to him, This is the first picture. A man who died and left no money, and a man who died and left a lot for his children. Wallahi, 
لقد رأيت في يوم واحد ولدا من ولدي عمر بن عبد العزيز يحمل على مئة فرس في سبيل الله. One day I have seen one of the children of Umar bin Abdul Aziz whose father left only nine dinner with them. He became so rich that he prepared 100 horses with all the weapons on them to give to the Mujahideen, free for his sabirillah. And I have seen at the other hand one of the children from Hisham ibn Abdul Malik beside the road begging money. You can imagine. This is something we can't believe. I died and I left a lot of wealth. It is impossible for my children to start begging again. What will happen to that wealth? But we never know. So the real insurance for our children is to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He will look after them for us. وَلْيَحْشَ الَّذِينَ لَوْ تَرَكُوا مِنْ خَلْفِهِمْ ذُرِّيَّةً دِعَافًا خَافُوا عَلَيْهِمْ فَلْيَتَّقُوا اللَّهَ وَلْيَقُولُوا قَوْلًا مَعْرُوفًا If you really want to have concern about the safety of our children, they will be wealthy and healthy. Dunya and Akhira will fear Allah when we are still alive to look after them and help them to find their path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The dunya will run after them. But if you don't get them into that reality, they will remain slaves to the dinar. And what the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said about the slave of a dinar, Ta'isa Abdul Dirham, Ta'isa Abdul Dinar, Ta'isa Wantakas. The real miserable people are people who make their God the dinar and the dollar and the money. Who will do anything to get that, even if I have to lose my Islam. That is the God that will bend them dunya and the akhirah. But the real success is to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm getting a few examples from Syria for us to remember that the problems around the world today, always, wherever there are problems, there are victims. They are homeless. There are people who will be in the camps. And they are looking for work, for help from the people who have not been afflicted with problems. And we will be questioned on the judgment day. When this happened to Libya, what did you do? Happened to Syria, what did you do? Happened to Afghanistan, what did you do? Fattakullah amastata'atun. Fear Allah as much as you can. And we will be questioned about that. And we have been told in the Hadith Qudsi, as Muslims, and as other human beings, as Christians and so on, they also have been told in their book our social responsibility towards human society. In the Hadith of Qudsi we read, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask every one of us on the judgment day, Ya ibn Adam, istat'amtuka falam tut'ayni. Ya ibn Adam, istat'aytuka falam tusqini. Ya ibn Adam, maritu falam tazurni. O son of Adam, I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me no water. I was a stranger and you did not welcome me. I was sick and you did not visit me. And the person will say, you are the Lord of the universe. You don't need to be fed. You don't, you don't need to be given water or be visited. And he will say, didn't you know that? Such and such of my servants used to be hungry and starving. All they wanted is food. And you used to waste your food the whole year. Especially in the month that you're supposed not to even cook food that month. You waste the food in Ramadan. What did you do about these people? Didn't you know that if you fed them, you would get that reward with me today? And when come to the sick people, and may Allah cure them and give them help, he will say, didn't you know that if you visit the sick people, you will find me with them? This is the good news to the sick people before the visitors. <laughs> Allah is with you. And anyone visiting you, they're visiting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So don't feel bad, you are not alone. The real lonely people are those who are out there, going wherever they want to go, but they are imprisoned within their own sins. 
burning with the flame of their sins. You are not in prison, you are not alone. It is Allah so testing you, and within that test, He is with you at the same time. Before the doctor comes, before the nurses, He is with you. And He is a real doctor for you. He is only testing you. So don't feel lonely. Maybe some people may come here to collect money as they usually do, helping the homeless people around the world, the unwanted, the unloved, the outcasts, the untouchables, the lonely, those people who are missing a warm smile from us. We have to do something for them. It can happen to us anytime. In this dunya, it can happen in Australia, in Syria, in America, anyway. And at that time, we need the people to look at us and help us as much as they can. Just keep that in your mind, inshallah, because you are hearing that money has been collected from other masjids, other places, to help the people of problems around the world. But we didn't see anybody officially here. Just keep it in your mind. But in your heart, we don't fail to make the dua for the sick people to be healed and for the dead people to be forgiven. And at the same time, we remember death. The dead that we have been told about, Aina Dhalimuna, Bal Aina Tabiona Lahum Filagayi, Bal Aina Firaunu Wahamanu, Aina Mandawa Hudunia Bisatwatihim, Wadikruhum Filwara, Dulmun Watoyanu, Hal Ab Al Mautu, Tha Aizil Li Aizatihi, Amhal Naja Minhu Bisultoni in Sanu. لا لا والذي خلق الأطوان من عدم الكل يفنى فلا إنس ولا جان everybody will finish and we will end human and jinn but if we don't want to end we keep ourselves alive forever simply by following Islam seriously otherwise this whole life is nothing more than a dream it will turn only into reality when we live according to the will of Allah سبحانه وتعالى بارك الله لي ولكم في القرآن الحكيم وجعلنا وإياكم من الذين يستمعون القول فيتبعون حسنة أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم الحمد لله ثم الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله عباد الله قال تعالى إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد. Dear Muslims to finalize, we share the story of Al Khalifa Harun Rashid, who used to talk to the cloud and he say, Yas ayatu ha sahaba, ay nashiti fa amtiri, fa inna harajaki satuhmanu ilayya. Inshallah. All clouds, it is up to you to go wherever you want to go with the wind and rain. Your harvest will come back to me. Telling us how wide his kingdom was, the Khalifa. And when he was dying, he told the people, please carry me. I want to see my grave before I go into it. And they took him there. And he looked inside, down, and then he looked up. And then he said, يا من لا يزول ملكه إرحم من قد زال ملكه Oh Allah, you are the king that will never end and your kingdom will never end. Forgive me because my kingdom is over. From this surface and this big world, this is my my place, not the grave. And then he said, ما أغنى عني مالية هلك عني سلطانية. All my wealth is useless to me if I don't fear Allah. All my power is useless to me if I don't fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahumma khfil al-Muslimina wal-Muslimat wal-Mu'minina wal-Mu'minat al-Akhiyya minhum wal-Amwaat. Bi rahmatika ya arhamar rahimin.
اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من فتنة الركون إلى هوى النفس ونعوذ بك من فتنة الخضوع لأمزجة الناس وأهوائهم واجعل لدعك عنا قصارى ما تطمع إليه نفوسنا في كل ما يصدر عنا من قول أو فعل أو سكوت اللهم اجعل صمتنا فكرا واجعل منطقنا ذكرا فإنك سبحانك تعبد بالصمت قبل أن تعبد بالمنطق اللهم أحسن خاتمتنا وأخرجنا من الدنيا مسلمين برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر